shut, shut, open, shut, open, shut, shut. It's <laughs> the last one to leave the country turned the lights off. Good God. Scary. Fortunately, I'm in a rather secure job at the moment. Britain's suffering its worst economic recession for a generation. It's all looking a bit 1970s at the moment. No, it's much worse than that. But there's money to be made when companies go bust. Congratulations, you're in liquidation. <laughs> somebody has to bury the dead, you know. It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. Let's try and do it as painlessly as possible. It's a good time to be a business undertaker. We are a necessary evil. People see us as uh, undertakers, effectively, although I've buried the same person more than once. Rugby's trainer group, Sally speaking. Business is booming at restructuring and insolvency specialist Begby's trainer. Insolvency service statistics dated Friday. The number of company liquidations in the third At their Leeds branch, calls from companies in distress are keeping yeah, Gerald Krasner and his team of liquidators hard at work. So we're going to be very busy, folks. I expect one insolvency practitioner to be businessman of the year next year, you know, because there's no businessman of the year at the moment. All the people that made the money have lost it. Right, next stop, car. If a failing company can't be saved, it's insolvency expert Gerald's job to sell it or shut it down. Today, he's going to the creditors' meeting of a collapsed construction business. Next left, then keep straight on. An opportunity for people owed money to find out what went wrong. Sometimes nobody turns up and it can be for millions. Sometimes people for £100 turn up. There's no hard and fast rule. I don't think anybody ever goes happy to one of these meetings. I think it's a case of a lot of people resigned to not getting any money back, and even if they do, it'll be a year before they see anything. In Manchester, emotions are running high. The company went down with debts of over three million pounds. Many local businesses have lost money. What sort of brought you here personally? Uh, about 112,000 pounds worth of debt that we weren't paid for doing security at various sites and uh, up and down the country. I think there's a feeling of being cheated and a, and a feeling of uh, of mistrust uh, when, when anybody owes you money. But when it's uh, money of the proportions that are owed to, uh, to our company, then yeah, it hurts. How much you owed? We're owed in the region of 900,000. So, and I, I feel that we may never get an answer to our final account. You want to physically do something to somebody, especially nowadays, it's, uh, it is real, real anger. And uh, it's just wanting to get a sense of, uh, uh, justice, a sense of revenge. Just every emotion of anger that comes with it, they all well up. Put it away. Insolvency is still surrounded by stigma and shame. Gerald? Yes? We've just got appointed on that compulsory. Right. There's about 60k in it, I think, but we've got to have a meeting. Could be more. Liquidator Dave Hodgson is Gerald's right-hand man. We make sure that transfer's ready for me within half an hour, the 32 and a half. OK. Cheers, Dave, thanks. If you think about it logically, nobody's pleased to see me. If it's a company directory who thinks I'm going to close him down, if it's a creditor who thinks he's not going to get paid, and if it's a member of staff from a company that's insolvent, they think I'm going to give him the sack and give him the P45. Dave started out as a debt collector. He's worked with Gerald for nearly 20 years. We work in different ways, but we, uh, we do get on OK. But his bark's much worse than his bite. He came to me about 1990. I'd already been going 20-odd years. I'm a lot older than David. 
It's a long time to work with somebody though, isn't it? You only leave me in a coffin. Does he know that? Yeah. He's a good cop, I'm the bad cop. I'm the one with no heart, I've been told. Dave's a nice guy, he, he warms them up for me. You're dealing with people, you know, it's, it's not like trying to repair a car, you know, it's somebody that's probably at the lowest ebb because they're losing everything they've got. So it's, you've got to be very hands-on, you've got to be softly, softly. You've got to massage people and try and look after them. January, and a long winter for British business has begun. Today's case is what's known in the insolvency game as a burial. Going out on a burial is where there's no chance of the company being saved whatsoever. It may even have no assets, but it's got lots of liabilities. In the words of Monty Python, it is a dead parrot. Can we go and have a look around and see what's, yes. what's what? Yes, no problem. Yeah. I know I wear a suit and a tie and all the rest of it, but you get a feel for these jobs over the years and you have a look around and it gives you an idea of what we've got asset-wise, which is not a lot here, to be honest with you. Yeah. TechAid makes parts for JCB Diggers, a top yeah. company that's been hit hard by the recession. Which is the kit that the guy wants to buy for 500 quid? Right. As a result, Steve Broadhead's order book is empty. Is it paid for? Uh, some of it is, some of it is. Some of it. With the recession happening as it's happened, nobody wants to buy JCBs anymore. So they're all parked up in a yard down there. So they don't want bits of us. So we've just actually stuffed. <laughs> it's a vicious circle. Yeah. I just see engineering disappearing. We're a, we're a country of service industries. I'm 58 and I'm a dinosaur. I'll take. Um, I take it, it things haven't improved? No, they're getting worse day by day. And I presume that your profit margins are getting smaller and smaller and smaller? If we had a profit margin. If you had a profit margin? Yeah. Once you realise that you, you've got to the black hole, you've got to call it a day. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, looking at this lot, we're going to have to call it a day. <laughs> Give us a ring if it oh, happens. Uh, and failing that, I'll speak to you on Monday. All right. Yeah, Take care. Then. Don't worry about it. We'll sort it out. One way or the other. All in today's work for you, eh? Unfortunately, that's a dirty job. Somebody's got to do it, but we'll try and keep it as pleasant as possible. If we can help them, we'll help them. The fact is, my marriage. Um, gone home with bad temper, um, as I say, sleepless nights, uh, you end up not wanting to come to work, and you just get to the point where you think, why am I trying to make something survive? Why do I want to make this survive? Some people see it, whether it's personal debt or a company debt, they see it as a sign of failure and a sign of weakness. Um, um, the, the answer to them is, if Woolworths can't hack it, you know, what chance has Mrs Miggins pie shop on the corner got? You know, you've got Woolworths falling, you've got MG Rover falling, you've got much bigger concerns struggling than that. You know, we're bailing the bloody banks out, for God's sake. So what chance has a, you know, a steel fabricator on Jewsbury Road got? It's, uh, it's just a sign of the times. It's heartbreaking. Don't know what we're going to do. All emigrate. At least there's plenty of firefighters working in Australia. You do your very best, but if you get emotionally involved, you are not helping the client. Does it touch you? No. People wept in your office that Oh, day. yeah. Men more than women. I had one suicide. What do you do when somebody sort of sits there and cries in front of you? Do you Give them a handkerchief. Adele. 
Britain's officially in recession. Over 30,000 companies are forecast to go bust before the end of the year. At an offer of 400, with an exposure of 2.2 million. Insolvency practitioner Gerald Krasner has never been busier. Today, he's down in London seeing new clients. It's half past nine, I've not had a phone call yet this morning, that's unusual. Obviously, this is a good day for the economy, nobody's going bust today. A company director with a large tax debt is late for the first meeting of the day. So this guy doesn't really want to come and see you this morning? Don't know. Give him the benefit of the doubt till 10 o'clock. Probably four minutes to. This happens one in three cases. We get them eventually. There are ways of forcing them to come. Broadcasting to Hull East Yorkshire, this is KCFM 99.8. Unemployment is continuing to rise with a 7.1% increase in the Yorkshire and Humber region. Nationally, the figure... Gerald's right-hand man, Dave Hodgson, is going to Hull. He's had calls from two companies in financial trouble. I've had a lot of work out of Hull over the years. It's a strange place. People seem to struggle when you get onto these... Uh, Places on the on the coast. I don't know what it is. Hull and Lincoln seem to be in a bigger recession than the rest of the country. <laughs> that sounds like. If you look round, it's uh, yeah. when the bars are shut down. Here we are, the financial centre of Hull. Six months ago, Paul Ewan ran a successful marketing company at Hull Marina. The business has suddenly collapsed. Most of those are up for sale. So you won't be buying one of those for a while? No, I don't think so. We'll have to wait a bit. Or win the lottery. Dave's meeting him at his accountant's office to get the liquidation underway. Are you going to have a, a valuer come round? There's some nice furniture there, by the way, yes. The cost of actually somebody coming with a van, picking him up, taking him downstairs, putting him in the van, taking him off to an auction room, selling them, paying the auctioneer's commission, there's nothing left. Mm. But uh, I'll, I'll get him valued. I'll we'll get him valued. You got any questions? No, not, not yet. <laughs> Having carefully considered the financial position of the company, the director concluded that the company could no longer continue to trade and that necessary steps be taken to place the company into creditors' of voluntary liquidation. Signing your life away. <laughs> <laughs> Any money left in the company will be used to pay Dave's fee. We've agreed the company's insolvent. You've got to preserve the position. It's not the liquidator is always paid first. This is the one that hurts. <laughs> In the event that the assets of the company are insufficient to discharge our fees and disbursements, i.e. £5,000 plus VAT plus disbursements, you personally guarantee to make sure our costs are covered. From what you told me, I don't think that'll be an issue. You just send me a cheque and then it's covered. Yeah. OK. Uh, we'll pack up, we'll, uh, we'll go back to Leeds and we'll make a start. OK. OK. It's taken just a couple of hours to wind up five years of hard work. All Paul has to do now is clear up the office. What you've worked for and what you've built up has, has disappeared. We've had staff to deal with, um, obviously not as many as some of the high profile cases that are going on at the moment, but nevertheless the people I've worked with and know personally, and that's very hard. I've got a family, I've got a house. Those things have got to be maintained. What's been the worst thing? I, I suppose accepting the failure of the business, accepting the fact that it can't carry on, what, despite your best efforts. 
So that's, that's probably the worst thing. When are you going to be moving out? Today. Today this is, this it. is it, yes, yeah. Everybody looks to blame somebody for what's gone wrong, but I think it's the nature of capitalism and the world we live in that every business has a beginning, middle and end. And that applies to big business and small business. I mean, we've just seen the demise of Woolworths. Who would have thought that 20 years ago? MF5 gone into their second administration. We live in strange times. The Chancellor, Alistair Darling, has said the economic outlook for the next year is bleak. He said the economy was likely to start growing again in the second half of the year. Rubbish. David! Gerald! <laughs> the collapse of the Hull marketing company has created problems for another business down the road. This printing works has a growing number of customers who've gone bust and can't pay their bills. You're not turning up for profit? No, no, we lost six customers in the last six weeks, which averaged probably 18,000 a month, which was just enough to, yeah. to throw it totally. Yeah. Can we have a look at the digital? Yeah, digital absolutely, yeah. yeah. During the economic boom, Ian Partridge and his co-director borrowed hundreds of thousands of pounds to buy machinery. But now there's not enough money to pay back the bank. So we're still in that equipment, online booklet, booklet making. Yeah. We've had it four months and done nearly 500,000 copies on it through it. Yeah. So it was absolutely churning out work. And now it's not. We was averaging up to 55,000 a, a month. You've got a Rolls Royce machine to do a milk round. Yeah. What's this one? This is a five colour saccharide press. How much is that one? Uh, that was 350,000. Excuse me, mate. See you, lovely. Come on, we'll go get some paperwork sent. There you are. Look, it's a printing company, yeah, I've got yeah. a pen that works. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably enough business there for one person, but we've got two directors and some staff. There's just not enough there to feed that many mouths. So, this is another one. Uh, just a sign of the times, they're dropping like flies at the moment. What's going to happen to them now, then? Don't know, they're going to have to have the, go get a job. One of them's talking about setting up again by himself, just on a much smaller scale. A year ago, we was under-invested in machine because we, we, was, we was that busy, we didn't have enough. So, you know, everybody was encouraging us, the banks, keep moving forward, you know, if you've got enough work coming in, go for it. I mean, Steve, I've always put everything into the business. Every penny we've made, we've put back. But it wasn't enough. It's shit. <laughs> Can you see the best street in Newcastle? There's six to let signs up there. Gerald's back in his home city of Newcastle. I don't think the big spenders are out anymore, especially outside London. City centre trade has been badly hit by the recession. A lot of businesses are bad at the moment. The bars, the restaurants, construction. Even the good businesses are cutting back. Closing a restaurant and telling the staff they've lost their jobs is all part of a day's work. Well, you come in, you tell the staff the position, you'd explain what's happening, they all go home, and then you get your agent to change the locks, put the for sale sign up, and that's it. You know, pizza between £7.50 and £9, you can feed four on that. Had no choice. We don't run a business at a loss. Isn't it a bit tough on people, though, when they just suddenly tell they're going to lose their jobs out of nowhere? Um, 
the alternative is say, please stay a month and you won't get paid. It's a tough world. Do you find it difficult to do that? I don't find it pleasant. I don't find it tough. It's what I do. Thank you, Strenner. At the office, new business is coming in thick and fast. The company now has over 1,800 insolvency cases on its books. So what sort of people do you like to work with? Uh, people who can work hard and then play hard. They don't close the books at five o'clock and go home if there's things to do. So are you a sexy beast, Gerald? Mm hmm? Are you a sexy beast? That's not for me to comment, it's for the women in my life to comment. But I understand there have been a few Mrs Krasners. Uh, one or two or three. I think you might scare me if you were my boss. Scare you? You've seen the nice side of me. You want to see the other side. You asked Judah. I've worked with him for a long time, so I've got used to his ways and I think I could deal with him. <laughs> it's fair. It's very fair. If I don't send her home in tears once a month, I'm not doing my job properly, you see. In Hull, Dave's arrived to chair a creditors' meeting for the Collapse Marketing Company. Let's look at our Christmas decorations up, isn't it? Festive. It's an opportunity for anybody who's got money to come and vent their spleen, so to speak. So uh, they can come and have their day. The company was over £70,000 in debt. Revenue and customs are owed a few quid. And VAT and pay as you earn. This is not a massive case. Um, but to the director of this, it's like if he was the director of ICI. You know, it's his, his dream's gone. I just talked about the agent saying that they don't want to take the office furniture away. Managing director Paul yeah, Ewan must wait That's and right. see if any of the people owed money decide to turn up. I didn't sleep much last night, so <laughs> <it better. laughs> So if somebody turned up today and said, am I going to get any money back, what would you say to them? No. Other businesses have lost money. It's not a pleasant situation to have been involved in or brought about. The creditors appear resigned to the fact they won't be getting anything back. Put the kettle on. <laughs> Congratulations, you're in liquidation. <laughs> Another difficult week for Britain PLC. A profitable one for the liquidators. I was born around here. When I was 15, I was a van lad for Warburton's. Happy days. <laughs> While Dave relaxes at the pub, <laughs> Gerald catches up with work from his office at home. Do you think you'll ever get married again? What, for the fourth time? I think there's enough aggravation in what I do as a job not to... But you never know, you meet the right woman. Getting a bit long in the tooth fit. I've lived on my own for a while now, so you get used to it. Well, last week I saw four in one day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That. When I went to Hull. Okay. And the two. Yeah. The reason why the second one's gone is because he's a creditor of the first one. That was the uh, final nail. In yeah, in the, in the corporate coffin. <laughs> but, say hello. Banknotes, the pride of my collection. 20 odd years, nearly 30 years I've been collecting. Bank of England notes, they've all gone bust or they've merged in with other banks. That is a £100 note from 1936. What do you like about them? 
that you can look back to an earlier era when f and wonder what you could buy in 1949 for five pounds. This is a 72 million year old dinosaur egg, which I acquired round about 1989. Dug up in the south of France. You'd just think it was a lump of rock to look at it, wouldn't you? Very heavy, unlikely to hatch. Somewhere in the house, I've got the cushion from the Prince of Wales investiture that he sat on. Whether it was the exact one he sat on, I always say it was, but there were 12, I think, there for members of the royal family, and I've got one of those. The pride of Gerald's collection is a specially commissioned painting of himself hosting a creditors' meeting. Rather younger and more slimmed down than I am now. I paid him a few pounds to do that. Three of the gentlemen on the top table, people who've had an influence in my life. And they're all dead. What do you like about this picture then? <laughs> Me? <laughs> in all modesty. What do I like about it? Well, it's, it's, it's like what I do, isn't it? Stand up and tell people about problems and try and solve them. I thought it was something to leave my children for when I'm no longer here. Summer's arrived. Liquidator Dave Hodgson and his boss Gerald Krasner are busier than ever. There goes my phone again. Somebody else who wants to go bust. Get on the phone, tell him to get his finger out. He's been paid and I need it signing. And if you've any problem, come back to me. Thank you. You get the phone calls at the most unexpected times from people saying, the bailiffs have turned up to turn me electric off, what should I do? You know? Well, you've got two choices. Pay them or let them turn your electric off. A lot of people think that we have got uh, little bags of pixie dust in our briefcases that we can make it all better. We haven't. Gerald's got a long list of new clients, but after 40 years in the business, Nothing surprises him. This was a business that had a £6 million property that had a turnover of a million pounds two years ago. And we had a s slight problem. You've got a £5 million house that's probably worth three and a half million in the current environment, which if you could sell for what you thought you could sell it, would have solved all the problems. Somebody's put their heart and soul into something and for no, through no fault of their own, it all goes belly up. That's where you've, uh, you've got to show them a little bit of tea and sympathy. Whereas I think that's where I come into my own, as opposed to Gerald who can be a, a tad more brutal than I, let's put it that way. Have you been involved in any companies? Yeah. Did it go into liquidation or yeah, did it...? Yeah, it, it folded about three months ago. Right. You've got to face the fact you've got to pay these people. I would want £500 a month for the first 32 weeks. Possible? Yeah, should be. Once yeah. you're in this, make it work. Yeah, definitely. The number of empty shops on the high street has doubled and Leeds has been badly hit. The economic news may be gloomy, but Dave's first call today is a success story. The rescue of a felt factory. Nine years ago, the two partners of this business came to see me because they were in serious financial difficulties. Um, because they're not a limited company, because it's a partnership, if we didn't find a solution, the, uh, well, the bottom line is they'd have gone bankrupt personally, which meant that the houses would have gone, uh, anything that they owned effectively with any real value would have gone, and that would have been the end of the business. Dave arranged for the owners to pay back over £160,000 in monthly instalments. Last bit, last bit, we're almost there. Smell success. <laughs> it's taken nine long years, but today he's picking up one of the last few payments. We must get the wolves from the door, haven't we, at the end of the day? Yeah. 
kick the wolves from the door. Today we've had one six one six seven five. Right. So that's basically the bulk of it then. That's it, yeah. Very good. It's a flyer. At least everybody's got, got the bulk of what no, they absolutely. Were back. absolutely. If it had been a limited company instead of a partnership, the owners could have walked away from their debts and started again. Instead, the factory has continued to manufacture bespoke carpet underlay and paid nearly every penny back. Everybody's kept the job. Yeah. You know, you're still you're still making felt. Yeah. You're still running around like headless chicken up and down to London and delivering it. Yeah. So if that's not a success yeah, success story, I don't know what it is. We are. Long may it continue to be, sir. So. Touch wood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay then. No, David. Thank you. Thanks very much. And I'll, see uh, you later. Next time I see you, it'll be with a, a certificate of compliance. You'll, yes. have, you'll have done your bit. Yes. I'll, I'll see you later. Champion. Cheers. Thanks. If there'd have been a limited company, chances are they would have just shut the doors and started from scratch. And there's nothing wrong with that, it's just the way that the law's structured. But the fact that they're a partnership means that it's the two partners that are personally liable for all its debts. It seems a bit rough, doesn't it, when you, other people can just walk away from their debts? It's the way of the world. It's just, it's just the way of the world. We can look anybody squarely in the eye um, in the full knowledge that we have done the right thing. Um, and that we, we've, we've traded honourably and we've both looked after our suppliers um, and that we've also looked after our customers, uh, the, the two cornerstones of, of any decent business. They can get on with their lives now and they don't need to see me professionally, hopefully, again. They might make some grass now. Be nice if they do. The auction rooms are filling up with the remains of Britain's bankrupt businesses. It's the liquidator's job to sell anything of value to raise cash for the creditors. Tomorrow, the contents of this builder's yard will be sold off in 1,300 lots. All that's left of a 30-year-old family business. A lot one below one, the computers, through that door there on your left-hand side. You're welcome. Hi, Gerald, you ran. Two catalogues. That one's the office furniture downstairs. Auctioneer and valuer Jason Pinder sells anything and everything for Gerald and Dave. See you later. I'm selling at the moment a Sunseeker Portofino 53 offshore cruiser, which is currently lying in Mallorca and is available for sale if anybody's interested. Um, we have uh, transport companies, cars, um, we have, uh, we, we, we've even been asked recently to value some racehorses. Some will buy it. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> and we've sold helicopters and we've just sold two aeroplanes that weren't flight worthy. The wings weren't attached or anything. Yeah. <laughs> What's in these? Uh, heated towel rails. Fair enough. We've even got all the dust extraction plant plotted up, David. Yeah. There's two separate ones in this lean-to shed here. It's a bit dusty in here, so... Just it's a bit. We've even lotted the uh, dust. Would you like to buy some dust? I'll give you a fiver, yeah. Well, the, <laughs> the sawdust may be all right for bedding. Somebody's hamster. Mm. No, I mean, it's impressive. It looks well. Thank you. You're welcome. You. It's not often you get it right. <laughs> how much how much money do you reckon you'll make it? With Ooh. I would say that we're probably going to make somewhere around about eighty thousand pounds with the vehicles. Good. There's been some throughput in this place. Oh yeah, there has. And the quality. They yeah. had apprenticeships here for, for, for the young lads coming from school. Yeah, yeah. It was done right. It was really, really good firm to work for. Yeah. So how many jobs went here as a result of...? I think about 70, off the top of my head. About 70. All the holiday mementos. Yes. They've got a travel card. They were secure. It was almost like a job of life. Yeah. 220. At 220, the bids on my right. Yours over there. A stainless steel mobile uh, preparation table by order of fish receiver. Have 20 bid now at 20, have 30 and 5, have 40 at 40 at 40, dead centre at 40 pounds. Lot 211 by order fish receiver, the Paris stainless steel tabletop chip scuttle. Have 10 bid now at 10, at 10, at 10, I'll take to the 5 at a 10 pound note. 10 pounds on a bid for this one then, now all it's worth to you now, I'll take 5 more. As recession continues to sweep the country, 
Over 30 pubs are closing down every week. Dave has one more failing business to visit before the day is done. Would you? Ladies darts trophy there. It's last orders at East Leeds Working Men's Club. A few years ago, you got thick in the £2,000 a piece for these, but I don't know what we'll get from these days. It's tired, it's shabby. You might come here for a game of cards and a couple of pints or a game of snooker with your mates, but you wouldn't want to spend a full night in here. Does it ever get you down coming in these places day after day? Though? You can't let it. You can't let it. I suppose it's like people who work in hospices and things like that. If you took it home, you'd be suicidal after a couple of weeks. What you've got to do is you've got to come and think, right, what's the best job I can do for the people concerned? Meat pies have just come. I bet it's been a good club in its day, this place. I bet it's been a cracker. A few years ago, you should have said somebody, I've got a lot of stacking function chairs. Did have given you two quid a piece for these? I'll be looking to sell them now. Could you do anything with this, then? Sell it. That's all you can do with it, sell it. Thank you, Lot 61, it's a vacant former private members club on a site of approximately 0.48 acres. Where do you want to start the bidding for me on this? Shall we say at £150,000 at 150? Opening bid, thank you, sir. £140,000 I have, 140, 142, 144, 146, 148. Anything that won't sell ends up here. The final resting place for a growing mountain of redundant office furniture. In Hull, there are small signs of life after liquidation. One of the directors of the insolvent printing company has found himself a new job. Everything's just falling into place. I'm, it's doing exactly what I did before, with more. Well, it's the same responsibilities. It's not with the financial hassle. But it's right at this stage is good. Uh, and all the machines are going. All the machines are going 12 hours a day, every day. Do you think you'll ever go back into business again? I'll never go back into business again. It's just a struggle from day to day with no help whatsoever. Hopefully I can make my mark here. Come out of it pretty good. Another uh, late one tonight, I think. Definitely. And tomorrow night. Down the road at the old printing works, the machines are still idle. Sometimes I walk in in the morning now and uh, expect everyone to be here. Um, but um, that's not the case, everyone's gone. But Steve Pelham, co-director of the original company, has started up another one. A lot of people sort of saying, oh, you set up a Phoenix company, you know, kind of thing, and I readily moved into that. It's a bit too easy, but it's not. It's not, it's not easy. It's, uh, I've had 17 years. It's like starting again from literally scratch. Who does all this machinery belong to now, then? The bank uh, own the, uh, the big uh, Sakurai machine. It's just a waste just to see it sort of sat there, no production coming off it. Steve's new business occupies one room at the top of the building. He's been able to buy back a machine from the old company. Well, as you see, this is it. This is the, uh, this is the start of uh, the new business, basically. Uh, this is all we've got left. It feels like snakes and ladders. Oh, 
the line and asked to be put through to a member of the Begbie's trainer team. The trail of failed businesses has brought Gerald back to London. It's his third recession. Everything is happening as expected. The last accounts are to April 05. Yeah. And you didn't draw a salary that year. No, I didn't. So what did you live on? Just bits here and there. Oh, is Dave not in? Ask him to ring me before 10. But back in Leeds, Gerald's partner of 17 years is about to deliver a shocking piece of news. He wants a divorce. Surprising news and shocking news, I suppose, but uh, after 17 years of holding hands with Gerald, uh, I'm moving on to pastures new. Um, handed me notice in, and uh, I'll be leaving shortly to go on to a brand new challenge. Cheers. It's a bit like breaking up with a girlfriend that you've been with for far too long. I've been with Gerald almost as long as I've been married, you know. It's... <laughs> you look more relaxed already. I feel it. It is like a millstone for Ram, isn't it? The good cop's going, so he's going to be a bad cop all on his own. This time next year, I'll either be on the dole or I'll be a millionaire. <laughs> Liquidator Dave Hodgson is buying a new car for his new job. I'm going into partnership with a, an, old, right. an old mate of mine starting a new business. And, right. But I just need something that I can you know, jump in and if I've got to go to Newcastle... It's then. important to have a flash car, though. It's not a flash car, well, you, you look the part. Uh, you know, I mean, turn up in a Rolls Royce to think that you're charging them too much and turn up in a Nissan Micra and they think that you can't do the job. So it's, uh, it's a case of having something that looks like you, you know what you're doing. Dave's joining an insolvency practice in the West Yorkshire town of Morley. A couple of nice little restaurants. We'll have a, we'll have a time. Whole new era. <laughs> For his boss, Gerald Krasner, it's the end of a relationship that's lasted 17 years. Are you shocked when he told you? No, nothing shocks me anymore. Not even a little bit? Not even a little bit. After what I've seen in my life, I've decided to become shockproof. Now I wished him well. He's been, uh, he's worked well with me over the years. He described it as a marriage. Really? I can tell you now, he hasn't exercised his conjugal rights in any shape or form on me. Martin, it's Dave. Dave, hi. Come on up. Thank you. The door is open. So will you visit Dave in his new office then? Oh, at some time, yeah. yeah well, when he's got a job for me. I know where Morley is, just. Martin. Oh, hey, Dave. See you. Nice to see you. Thank you. All ready for me. Seat. All ready for me. Absolutely. How's things? Very well, how are you? Out of breath in the steps. <laughs> <laughs> OK, there's a gym on the second floor. Oh, you can get your membership there. <laughs> this is my new partner, this is Martin. It's the start of uh, this time that she will be millionaires and all that rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> That's my trophies. That's my snooker champion trophy. Look, I've even got my Christmas braces with me. It's the Institute of Credit Management. It goes back to my old debt collection days. I used to be a commercial debt collector for my sins before I got involved in this silly game. You don't see my video of Graceland. <laughs> and my Elvis CD. Now there's an interesting photograph. That's about 1985, that is. Handsome bugger. Just couldn't see myself doing another 15 years of the corporate 
hamster wheel, if I want a better description. It just wasn't for me. And as I say, this was just too much of a good offer to, to turn down. It'd be nice to finish off my working career just a little bit more relaxed. 17 years, all in one banker's box, it's frightening. <laughs> Hi, it's Gerald. Just to land him on the way back to the office. I want to shoot five minutes with him on a matter. It's nine months since the official start of the recession. But there's talk of green shoots of recovery. Well, if you believe everything politicians say, good luck. They said that manufacturing was... It went up 0.2 of 1% for one month. That is not a green shoot of recovery, I'm afraid. The banks are still not lending like they used to. And it's raining, so that's another problem. I suppose you don't really want green shoots, do you, being an insolvency practitioner? You don't expect me to answer that, do you? They're talking about two parliaments just to get the public spending back in Kiel. That's 10 years. You know, 10 years is, you know, usually it's two years. 10 years is forever, and that's on their best estimate. Everybody's in denial. I think I read over the weekend that tax revenue's 20% down. Unheard of, just unheard of. We're borrowing so much money, we'll become a banana republic if we're not careful. Unfortunately, well, fortunately for me, but unfortunately for my children and grandchildren, they're the ones who'll have to pay it back. And we've got global warming, that should be good for another recession. You know, when half of England is underwater, there'll be a few more businesses going bust. And according to the uh, future projections, by 2030, in all seriousness, parts of the UK could be underwater. So is there any good news out there? Yeah, join the insolvency profession. Have a job for life. Mm -hmm.